What is happening, Magnus Sites? We got a review on Dead Space, which is something I plan on getting in the next couple of days. That kind of rhyme, though, I hate to play the game. Bombs! So let's check out and see what IGN has to say. <laughs> Oh, Never Lord. mind the numerous necromorphs, <laughs> the tortured torsos sprouting out of walls, <laughs> or the terrifyingly towering space sphincter. The thing I was most scared of going into the Dead Space remake is that it wouldn't live up to my fond memories of the fantastically horrific 2008 original. After just over 12 hours spent stalking through the revitalized USG Ishimura, I'm happy to report that of the many things to legitimately fear about this haunted space hulk, that was not one of them. This new Dead Space enhances the original in almost every way, taking a plasma cutter to drop its ugliest appendages on the cutting room floor, while preserving the essence of what made its distinctly dismemberment heavy shooting so special, and grafting on welcome new character details in order to present its creepy sci-fi horror story in its very best light, and its most intimidating shadows. <laughs> If you missed it the first time around, Dead Space takes the action-oriented brand of survival horror established by Resident Evil 4, evolves the combat with a combination of gunplay and the ability to throw objects with kinesis and temporarily slow down enemies with a stasis power, and forces you to unlearn everything you know about killing zombies. Okay. Its hordes of agitated mutants must be blasted limb from limb, as opposed to being instantly dropped with a headshot. Wow. It sets its strategic brand of slaughter on board a doomed spaceship that seems straight out of Event Horizon, and focuses on the determined plight of engineer Isaac Clarke and his increasingly disturbing search for his scientist wife, Nicole. Nicole? Yeah. Christopher for her weeks. Although it spawns sequels, comic books, and even a spiritual successor in the form of 2022's The Callisto Protocol, in my mind nothing has come close to exceeding Isaac's first heavy footsteps onto the deck of the Ishimura. At least until now. Developer Motive Studio has made some major renovations to Dead Space's House of Horrors, and boy do I love what they've done with the place. For one, it looks amazing. The supreme level of detail on Isaac's instantly recognisable engineering suit alone makes that of the original look like a cheap fabric onesie plucked from the bottom shelf in a costume shop. Our ominous spaceship surroundings are made to feel substantially more spine-chilling thanks to the realistically weathered steel surfaces and walls overrun with putridly pubescent levels of pus-filled oh, pimples. <laughs> and impressively moody lighting highlights the enhanced environmental detail while keeping plenty of corners cloaked in shadow and us in the dark in terms of what might be lurking in them. I Not only does the Ishimura look more shadows. striking than ever before, it's also been restructured to encourage more exploration. For the starters, you can now shuttle freely back and forth between the tram station connecting all the different decks, and you can also travel between certain areas on foot via new corridors like those that connect the flight deck to the medical deck, or indeed off your feet in other sections. A spectacular new zero-gravity detour that takes you from the hangar bay to engineering is just one area that takes advantage of the far more liberating flight controls that allow you to manually steer Isaac through space as opposed to beaming him in straight lines from surface to surface. The benefit of this more interconnected Ishimura is twofold, since not only does it engender a far greater sense of place than the more sectioned off original, but it also allows for backtracking to access previously locked doors as Isaac's security level increases over the course of the journey. Okay. Giving you the chance to discover weapon upgrade schematics and various other treasures, and making progression feel a bit more like a murder-heavy Metroid. Dead Space's combat remains focused on literally disarming and or dislegging each snarling flesh golem rather than wasting ammo on their brainless heads or spongy torsos. Enjoy. Enemy types resemble the same gaggle of ghouls that seem to have been plucked right off John Carpenter's Pinterest board, but there appears to have been a few notable tweaks made to the variety of threats that you have to encounter. The acid-vomiting variations of the basic spike-handed slasher seem to be far more common here than I remember them being in the original, and they kept me on my toes even after I'd sheared off their legs from a seemingly safe distance. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hypermobile that twitches acid. seem far more frenetic than before, uh -oh. and really put my aiming That's some horror movie shit right there. <laughs> 
Each necromorph now has several layers of flesh and bone to blast away, not only ratcheting up the gore, but also giving you a clear visual indication of how close you are to lopping off a limb, which is extremely handy when you're trying to prioritize a room full of twisted targets. <laughs> Dead Space also yeah, finds creative on. new ways to keep tension levels okay. high, often via the cunning like, use of uh, circuit protocol. breakers that force you to divert power between certain interactive elements of the environment. At one junction box early on, I opted to channel power to a maintenance storage room door, but in doing so, I had to sacrifice the lighting system. Meaning my journey back out of the area was illuminated solely by the narrow beam of torchlight on Isaac's plasma cutter, and making for a considerably more panic-inducing trip as each necromorph flashed into my restricted field of view. Plasma cutter. Isn't that someone else's weapon too? That sounds Conversely, really familiar. We're a few more objects in our surroundings Plasma in order to cutter. even the often overwhelming odds, including stasis tanks that can detonate with wide areas of effect, plunging a group of enemies into temporary slow motion and giving you a precious moment to decide whether to stay and shoot their legs off or use your own legs to bolt for the nearest exit. <laughs> All throughout the tension-filled adventure, Motive Studio has kept Dead Space's best moments largely intact, while dramatically overhauling and paring back its weakest scenes. The first fight against a regenerating hunter plays out in the same intense, close quarter style as it did previously, because that brilliantly pulse-raising encounter is just as effective now as it was 15 years ago. By contrast, the much maligned asteroid blasting sequence in the story's first half has been completely discarded and dramatically redone. Hmm. Instead of being stuck in a gunner's seat struggling to fend off an asteroid shower with a pair of rapidly overheating cannons, we must now head out into space and calibrate the Ishimura's defense system by boosting between each cannon and manually calling each strike, while hulking chunks of space rock spin past our noses towards the ship's hull. It takes a sequence that was previously an aggravating chore and transforms it into an utterly exhilarating challenge. And it's just one of a number of examples okay. that greatly refines some of the original game's rougher edges. In addition to a host of quality of life improvements across oh, the board, the I particularly like the way that weapons are now found in the world rather than simply being bought from the store for large sums of credits. It's smart to introduce a no money down test drive of Dead Space's Ooh. seven weapon types, particularly for Slice newcomers and to the series. And although I admittedly settled on the same plasma cutter, line gun, and force gun combo that I employed in my multiple playthroughs of the original game, they each felt even more fun to use thanks to new perks like Incendiary Fire that can be unlocked via the smartly retooled upgrade system. By the time I'd reached the formidable final boss, I'd augmented my favourite suite of repurposed mining tools with enough extra power to bring a tear to the eye of Tim the Toolman Taylor. The monsters in Dead Space are the only things with more meat on their bones, and indeed Isaac's story has been fleshed out with satisfying new helpings of extra detail. There's an entirely new multi-part side mission devoted to following a trail of holographic logs that reveal his wife Nicole's most recent movements before the necromorph outbreak. Medical is overwhelmed. We need help. Along with other audio and text files that better explain the strange status of the couple's relationship and the role that the mysterious Church of Unitology played in Isaac's upbringing. As a result, I found that I was able to achieve a far deeper understanding of Isaac's wavering mental and emotional state this time around, and although the overall story arc is broadly the same as the original, this added context, along with some clever character tweaks, meant that its shocking final twist felt considerably more plausible. Dead Space's main man is humanized even further by his ability to talk, rather than merely accept his crewmate's orders without so much as a silent nod of acknowledgement like he did in the original. Mm. Actor Gunnar Wright, who voiced Isaac in the Dead Space sequels, delivers a suitably stoic performance, and it makes Isaac feel like a far more influential figure when he's actively debating plans of attack with Chief Security this super reminds me Hammond, of a Celestial. as opposed to just tackling each task. I like can't be the only person that kind of saw that. What about the face? It's the front of it. Kinda Thankfully, of this is done sparingly. Isaac only speaks when spoken to and doesn't deliver Nathan Drake style quips while he's pruning limbs off space zombies like they're the bloodiest kind of bonsai tree. Instead, his moment to moment status is indicated by his heavy breathing and his hurried like heart being heard in moments like of gun. silence, exactly as it should be. The verdict. What you give me? An 8 out of 10? With its stunningly redesigned spaceship, smartly and subtly enhanced story, and spectacularly reimagined action scenes, 
Motive Studio has managed to successfully breathe new life into the seminal sci-fi horror universe of Dead Space. Despite the fact I've returned to the 2008 original several times over the years and found it to hold up fairly well, my latest journey through the darkened hallways of the USG Ishimura still managed to consistently surprise me and pull me into Isaac's plight far more than ever before. While still satisfying my desire to butcher undead astronauts with an enjoyable arsenal of wildly unsafe mining tools. It's clear that this superb Dead Space remake has been a labour of love for the team at Motive Studios, who very carefully balanced innovation and renovation with preservation, and to their credit, the end result is undoubtedly the definitive way to experience, or re-experience, one of the best survival horror shooters close, that dude. Capcom never made. <laughs> for more IGN reviews, check out our verdicts on Forspoken and Fire Emblem Engage. And for everything Ooh. else, stick with IGN. Well, IGN... Help me make a decision that Ryan's going to play in the game. Bars! I'll also be looking at other um, reviews, but Dead Space is a game that you guys have been asking me to play for years upon years. And uh, PlayStation 3, uh, you could never play the PlayStation 3 games on PS4 and all this other crap. And. Um, yeah, so finally, now I have a chance to really do it with the remake, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a happy camper, I will be getting it, be on this channel the day of release, 10 million subscribers, woo!